4th, Independence Day. Amen. When we celebrate our uh, America as birthday, and uh, I'm glad I'm American. Amen. Glad to be here. Thank the Lord for the opportunity to be here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I tell you what, some folks, they need to get a slow boat to China. They hate America so much, but I'm glad I'm here. Hallelujah. We're going to worship. We're going to have church, and we're glad you're here this morning, and uh, thank the Lord for the opportunity and the privilege that, uh, that avails us. Amen. And uh, we're so thankful, so thankful that uh, the Holy Spirit is going to be here to minister and undertake, and uh, we want you just to let God have his way. Would you do that? Amen. Do you feel like it? Can we got we got Texas folks here? We got other folks here. Amen. Brother Ron, Nick, and Stephen. God bless you, God. Good to have y'all. Good to have each one of you here this morning. Thanks for coming and having spending this July Fourth with us this morning. We uh, hey, this is going to be more of a patriotic service too. Amen. I hope that's all right. I think you'll like it. I think you'll enjoy it. Amen. As long as God's in the center of it, that's going to make it worthwhile. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's stand together, go to the Lord in prayer, invite his presence collectively, and ask God to minister and have his way. Pray in your own way. Father, we thank you this morning for your presence. We know that is in this sanctuary. Lord, we know you're the almighty God. We bless you. We lift you up. Lord, you are the one that is worthy to receive all praise, glory, and honor. We ask you this morning, Lord, just let heaven come down. Just let your glory just fill hearts and souls this morning that we can leave in a different way in which we've come in your holy name, in your name, Lord Jesus. And Lord, we want to thank you now. Thank you for the precious blood that makes it all possible, your blood covering, your blood protection. And we want to give you praise, glory, and honor. Have your way in this service, Lord. And we love you, we love you, we love you. And all of God's children said, praise the Lord. Praise Amen. The Lord. Tell your neighbor you're glad to see them this morning. God bless you. Brother Keith, yeah. all sister, sister Diane, go lead us in some worship. Get us started. Let's worship the Lord. Let's have church.
of heaven, 276. Oh, Thank you. 
burden down with trouble and care. Bring on and on, for God will answer your prayer. And into the garden Jesus went to pray. Until his sweat became his blood, they say. Bringing those prayer bells there in agony. Bringing oh, salvation that we might be free. Now turn back to page 212. Keep on the fire line, page 212. <laughs> that we all must face but if we die fighting it is no disgrace and coward in the service he will find no place so keep on the firing line and you must fight be brave against all evil will never run nor even lag behind if you soldier he can trust keep on the firing line well if you wear a crown and bear the cross you must keep on that firing line and life was but to labor for the master dear you'll step to banish evil and to spread good cheer great you'll be rewarded for your service here so keep on the firing line and you must fight we pray against all evil and never run nor even lack behind if you to heaven brother will be glad keep on the firing line and I will praise the Savior for the call we had yes keep on that firing line oh when we see the souls that we have helped to win we're leading them to Jesus from the paths of sin with the shadow welcome we can no more in. So keep on the firing line. Oh, you must fight, be brave against all evil, and never run nor even lag behind. If you would win for God and the right, just keep on the firing line. Well, give a good hand clap of praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Stay on that firing line. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you what. Sometimes we get discouraged. Thank Lord, when are you going to answer that prayer? But you know what? He just said you just got to keep on keeping on. Hallelujah. Stay on that firing line. Amen. Because if one thing is going to get the devil upset, I like to give him ulcers. Amen. <laughs> Has to be able just to keep on praying and believing God. And if you don't like it at all, but I'll tell you what, whenever you keep on trusting and believing God, he's going to come through. He's Amen. never left us, nor he's ever forsaken us. Amen. Give you that great opportunity this morning to minister to the Lord in our time of giving so that our ushers would take their places just now. God bless you this morning. Thank you for that great, great opportunity. God bless you this morning. You're a great, great giving church. You're awesome. God bless you for your faithfulness unto the Lord to take care of ministry under the needs. We know the Lord has blessed you. He's interceded for you, and he's always going to continue to do that. 
Has he not blessed this church? I mean, praise God. Thank God for his blessing. And that's because you've been so faithful, church. God bless you. Amen. Praise God. I'm going to ask Brother Tweedy. Brother Tweedy, would you ask God bless us on giving this morning, please, sir? Heavenly Father, as we come today, we are so thankful, Lord Jesus. We thank you for our independence today, Lord Jesus. We thank you for this opportunity we have to be yes, back Lord. in your home. We ask now that yes. you bless this offering, bless the, those that have to give Granted. and those that have not to give. And we just give you the praise and you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you again. Remember, this is Mission Sunday also. So don't forget to put in your missions offering as well, and God bless you do so. Brother Keith's going to give us our offertory this morning. Amen, and you're going to be blessed. Amen. Hey, remember, this is Patriotic Sunday. Amen, of all Sundays. Amen. Brother Keith, God bless you. Come, my brother. Amen. Amen. We're going to try one a little bit different if my band shows up this morning. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure y'all have heard it and you know it. Y'all are welcome to help me out and sing it with me. God bless the USA. Amen. Praise God. No sound. If tomorrow all things were gone, I'd work for all my life, and I had to start again with just my children and my wife. I'd thank my lucky stars to be living here today, cause the flag still stands for freedom. And they can't take that away. And I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget the man who died and gave that right to me. And I'll gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today. Well, there ain't no doubt I love this. God bless the USA. From the lakes of Minnesota to the hills of Tennessee, or oh, across the plains of Texas, yes. yes, from sea to shining sea. Detroit down to Houston and New York to L.A. There's pride in every American heart and it's time we stand and say that I'm proud to be an American where at least I know I'm free and I won't forget those who died to give that right to and I'll gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today. Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the USA. And I'm proud to be an American where at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget. May you die to give that right to me And I gladly stand up Next to you and defend her still today Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land God bless the U.S.A. Awesome, awesome job, Brother Keith. Praise the Lord, praise the God. 
I'm, I'm glad I'm an American. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. I kept looking to see if President Trump wasn't going to walk through those doors. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that was his great theme song. Every time he had all those rallies. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. A lot of good words in that great patriotic song. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, Brother Keith, for doing that. Didn't know he was going to until this morning. So that was awesome. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, if you're uncomfortable because of the things that's taken place this morning, the songs of being sung, just stay where you're at and just stay nervous, okay? <laughs> Hallelujah. Because I tell you what, God is good. Amen. Yes, and He is in the midst. How He is blessed. How He is blessed. But we do want to go to the Lord in prayer. We want to ask God. He's going to touch and to minister and this morning. We know that there are those that we need to be praying for. As a matter of fact, in, in the close, I'm, I'm going to share some this morning. And then at the close of our prayer, then we're going to have a special prayer for Brother Harold Higgins. Brother Harold took a fall, and uh, he is in the hospital at Springfield. He's probably going to be there for a little while. He has some broken bones, and uh, we need to pray a special prayer for Brother Harold. And not only for Brother Harold, but also we need to be praying for Sister Olame, because we know that he took care of her. And uh, we need to pray for the two of them, but especially for Brother Harold. We'll do that in our closing prayer this morning, okay? But likewise, we want to remind you as far as let's keep praying for all those we've been asking God to touch and to, to minister this morning. We're going to continue praying for our, 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 our good friend and our, our ex-missionary, and that's Brother C.L. Haston. Keeping Brother Haston in our prayers, God's going to minister. We want to continue praying a special prayer for Brother Gary Wilson. Brother Gary just has not been feeling real good uh, the past uh, past week or so. We need to pray for Brother Gary that God's going to touch him, minister to him. We know that there are others that are battling with, uh, with cancer, and we're praying for these, that God's going to give us a miracle. God is a miracle worker. I won't go through and name all these again, but you have your prayer list this morning from the, uh, from the bulletin. So I know you pray for these on a daily basis through the week. God's hearing. He's answering prayer. And he is going to intercede. I'm just looking for some miracles to take place. Wouldn't it be awesome to see a, a miracle? Amen. God just to minister, to move, and to flow through our church and for individuals to receive these great miracles. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, Brother Lonnie, you being here, is a, it's a miracle in a sense. Praise God. And uh, for others this morning, we know the Lord is able this morning to touch and minister. Brother Bill McNutt, he did come home. Uh, he is... Uh, been, he has uh, had uh, hip surgery, and uh, we need to pray for him. Had some other complications while I was in the hospital. That's why he had to taste, stay several days there uh, in the hospital, but he is home now. So we'll keep Brother Bill McNutt in our prayers. So uh, keep him in your prayers along with the others we've been praying for, believing God for. We know the Lord certainly is the answer this morning. We're going to be believing God. And we know the Lord is going to hear us in answer prayer. I believe God done some things Wednesday night. And I believe we're going to be hearing some further results into that as we've already heard. Can you hear a good amen, church? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God because he is the answer. I want to pray for our nation this morning. Keep our nation in our prayers especially. And the Lord will minister. Pray for the leadership. God's going to intervene. We pray that God's going to touch you to minister as well. It's uh, missionaries and uh, at home and abroad, for God to touch and minister into their lives. But above all, if there's ever a time we need to see souls drawn to the kingdom, it's today. Let's pray for souls that God's going to minister. On that note, I wonder how many would like to show a hand that you know somebody that needs God, a family member or someone, hands up lifted all over the building for lost souls, believing God to touch you to minister. We know the Lord is the answer this morning, and we know that he is the one we can call upon this morning. He is the presence and that present help, and we're believing him through the precious, precious blood cleansing. Sister Diane, going to prepare our hearts, lead us to go before the throne of grace and prayer this morning in our course this morning. Jesus. Give him glory. Give him praise. Peace. 
If you feel like it in your feet, would you stand with us in reference to the Lord? Let's lift our hearts and our voices. Let's pray Pentecostals. Let's leave God together this morning. Lord, we know you're the Lord God Almighty. There's not anything that is too hard for you. Everything is naked and open before your eyes. You of whom we have to do. We lift you up this morning. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. The Prince of Peace. Oh, we thank you this morning for loving us in that great capacity that you love us. But now, Lord, we call upon you for the need that is in our lives, Lord. Lord, you see each need that is in our, Father, in our bulletin, Lord, in our prayer, our prayer list. Lord, we know that, Lord, that there are those that are battling with cancer. Lord Jesus, cancer is a name, but your name's above the name cancer. And Lord, it's going to bow its knee before you. And Lord, to give us the victories and the healing and the cleansing, Lord, in the power of your holy name, Lord. Lord, we pray this morning that you just place your hand up over these that even recovered from surgeries, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit do your perfected work. Father, within them this morning, Lord, because we know that you are the miracle worker, God. Oh, Lord Jesus, let your holy, 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 holy presence of infiltrate these moms and dads and sons and daughters, Lord, that are battling with these sicknesses and, and diseases, Lord. We know that you're the help and the present help in the time of need, Lord. And Father, there are many this morning, Lord, Lord, that is on this prayer list, God. They need you, Lord. They need your intercessions, God. Lord, we pray you send forth your word. Watch over your word by your spirit to confirm it into each life, Father. Because we know what your word says. You was wounded for our transgressions, you was bruised for our negatives, and we know that by your stripes, we know we're healed, God. Let that presence be the evidence, God, that will make it evident and real. Moms and dads and sons and daughters and friends and neighbors that need salvation, God. Give us souls, Lord. Let there be a drawing and a wooing in this hour like never before, Lord. God, we need you. Lord, save and deliver even to the uttermost this morning, Lord. Remember our nation this morning, God. A nation that needs you more than ever before, God. Lord, in our leadership, God, that needs salvation and intercession, Lord. Hear us this morning, oh God, our missionaries at home and abroad, God, that are hazarding even their lives, God. We live them to you, Lord. You are the Holy Spirit of God that we hear us in. And you're the ever presence. The ever presence. We lift you up. Prince of peace. King of glory. And worthy word. Oh, we worship Oh, worship Him. Love Him this morning. Oh, yes, we do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy, holy, holy. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we love Him. Yes, Jesus is worthy. Oh, He's already overcome. Think about it. Hallelujah. you to lift your hearts and your voices let's agree together we need to pray for brother harold higgins this morning in the hospital anticipating surgeries we need to pray and believe god to touch brother harold really needs our prayer let's pray together right now shall we lord jesus we call upon you this morning lord harold higgins belongs to you lord he's your son lord we know he's took an unexpected fall yesterday but jesus we know that you are the great physician you're the healer, Lord. We know sometimes things happen to us, Lord, in this life, Father. We know we're human. But, Lord Jesus, we know that you said if we will call upon your name, put our confidence and our trust in you, Lord, that you will answer our pleas, God. And we pray right now, God, knit those bones together, bone of thy bones, Lord. Oh, let the presence of your Holy Spirit bring healing, 
healing to those bones, God. Heal this man, oh God. Let him feel that healing virtue. Lord, and knit him back together again, Lord. Let him feel it, Lord, as only, only you can, because you're the Lord God Almighty, Lord. Let Brother Harold feel that this morning, God. Let him feel it in the power of your name, in the name of Jesus. Take care of Sister Olamay. We know you will, Lord. We pray for Gary Wilson, God, Brother Gary as well. Lord, lift him up. Touch his body. We believe him for the miracle, God. Lord, for him and the others as well, Lord. Yes. We're believing you. We're believing you, believing you, because you are the Lord God Almighty. Thank in you. Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. We give you praise. We give you glory. And all of God's people believe it together said, Amen. Amen. Slip a hand toward heaven and thank him for it. God, we thank love you. Lord. Thank yes. you this morning for hearing us and ministering and answering and ministering in prayer. Glory. You are the Almighty God. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't God good? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated if you like. Amen. This is BGMC Sunday well, as well. This is Butter Barrel Sunday. Amen. Hey, have a special little treat this morning. Amen. 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 Go ahead, Sister Lori. Praise All Lord. right. Can James and some of the kids that are in Children's Church or any of the children, can, can they come up here, please? Come on, James. We're expecting you this there morning. Fiona, you want to come up and say the pledge? <laughs> oh, yeah. We're going we're gonna to do the Pledge of Allegiance. Yes. Praise the Lord. All right. <laughs> Give our kids your attention. Amen. Okay. Any of the other ones want to come up? Does um, Aiden want to come on up? We're missing something here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come on up, Aiden. All right. All right, would everybody stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, is invisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. All right. Good job. Amen. Amen. That is just awesome. Amen. Praise yes. the Lord. Awesome, Amen. awesome. Praise the Lord. Good. Our choir is going to, <laughs> going to sing for us while our young people are going to be coming around and try to pick your pockets. Amen. Amen. So as they come around with a butter barrel, dig in your pockets, pull out your chain. Hey, they will take Jacksons and Lincolns as well Amen. also, you know. So uh, ministering to our children and uh, to our BGMC ministry. Thank you, Sister Diane. Appreciate it. If there's a brown book there in front of you, uh, grab it and let's all uh, turn to page 494. We're going to sing Battle Hymn of the Republic.
so very much for your ministry to us this morning, each one. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Amen. I tell you what, it's a blessing to be able to minister on the behalf of the children and uh, know that that's the inspiration that we need to hold on to for certain because our tomorrows uh, are going to be governed by how we train them. And uh, we need to uh, be so very, very thankful and be very very attentive uh, in being able to uh, certainly pay a ministry unto our, to our children and to our young people. So thank you 
thank you so much in your time of giving this morning and, and giving this special time. Did, I, I, little James, he just done all right, did he not? <laughs> Amen. That's awesome. <laughs> praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. That is just very, very special. Praise God. Well, we're so glad you're here. God bless you this morning that you made it to uh, one of the, uh, the great days of celebrations for our nation. Amen. And uh, we're glad you're here to celebrate it with us today in the right form and fashion. And that is on the Lord's Day. So on the behalf of what this nation really represents and why we're here this morning, I, uh, I hope I got my, uh, my statistics right. Whenever I've done my arithmetic, if I, if I figured it right, I think this is the, uh, the 245th birthday of America. Is that not correct? I think that's correct. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So this nation is celebrating its 245th birthday today, and we're here to celebrate that together. So at this time, we're going to uh, want to listen to a song, if you would. So uh, Sister Monica going to bring that song up. Let's listen to a patriotic song again about America, if you would please.
please remain standing. While you're standing, please remain standing. We're going to go to the Word this morning. I'd like to read from the book of John, St. John, in chapter number 11, where we want to take our text this morning. So thank you so much for standing. And we're going to read these scriptures to you this morning, beginning in verse number 40, 49. Verse number 49, St. John chapter number 11. And one of them named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, You know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people, and that the whole nation perish not. And this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. Now listen to what he says in verse 52. And not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. I want to talk to you this morning on this thought that I feel is very, very prevalent and needful. And that is a nation that needs God. Shall we pray? Father God, we thank you this morning for your presence. We've already felt and so aware of in this sanctuary this morning. We ask your blessings, Father, up over the message of the ministry, the giving of the word, each one the sound of our voice as well, Lord. May your blessings rest upon them, each one by the way of live stream, Lord. May your intercessions be up over them to draw them to you. And Lord, we yield to you now because we know that it is you that we want to be exalted. We want to be blessed, Lord that we'll leave in a different way and which we come in your holy name. Thank you for this nation, Lord. Thank you for your blessings upon it, and we give you praise. And thank you above all for the precious blood that makes it possible. And all of God's children said amen. Amen, amen. amen. You may be seated. Thank you so much for standing, referring to the Lord for the reading of God's holy word. And also for the song America and for the music and uh, I want to say to you, church, you just really have impressed me this morning. And um, I'm just tired of standing. You've stood up so much. But uh, no, I'm only teasing. Praise the Lord. I tell you what, if there's uh, anything worth doing, it is that in giving the uh, appreciation for the, uh, for the nation that we are in, that God certainly has blessed it. To. But I think that you will agree with me this, this morning with uh, Maybe some of the things, this is not going to be a deep message, but it's going to be a message that I, I felt to the Lord that I want to share with you this morning. Because if there's a time that uh, this nation needs God, it's today. Because whether you agree with me or not, uh, I think you can see in this reality that there's a big drifting that has taken place in this America over the last several years. Uh, and instead of getting closer, they're drifting further away. And I pray God will stir before it happens uh, that we can come back to the place where we need to be and to realize that and know who the Lord God Almighty really is. Can I hear a good amen? amen. It is through that thought this morning. Uh, it is uh, all the wars and, and the lives of the young men and women uh, that have given their lives that makes it possible for you and I to have the freedom and the joy that we can experience and have today. We think about the catastrophes and through the turbulent weathers that we've seen and we've dealt with uh, in the past. And the lives have been lost even through the unforeseen uh, because it's reality that is so true. Also the pandemic, which you and I likewise, even we're still recovering um, from this coronavirus thing, um, along with a lot of the other waves of sicknesses um, of all kinds that America has dealt with uh, we know, pardon me, there's been the, uh, there's been the typhoid fevers and uh, there's been all the other things that have hit unexpectedly that has affected America and a lot of people have lost their lives. Uh, I think that most of you will agree with me that the direction that our nation really is headed in this morning um, is not a good direction. And uh, you know what? It's going to be in reality to know that uh, because it is due to the, the sin, it is due to the evil, it is due to the anti-God activity that has taken place in our great America, and because of that that is happening now, 
we are experiencing and we are reaping the repercussions uh, of the anti-God sentiments uh, that have been taking place in our nation. Albert Einstein made a statement. Uh, he said this, and I quote, I do not fear the explosive power of the atom bomb. What I fear is the explosive power of evil in the human heart, end quote. Einstein had a handle on some things there because if there's something that's reality today, we know it is in the hearts of men, men and women today is why that we're experiencing things that we are experiencing today. America started out good. America started out well. We know there were difficulties. We know there were problems. But now the compromise has plagued her to not praying, to not having the moving of God in our, moved him out of the schools to where he can't move in our schools like he should and would be able to. To removing the Ten Commandments um, out of our justice systems um, and of our legal places, uh, we think and we look at it and we begin to wonder, where are we going and why has this happened? And I'm reminded of what happened this past week um, that I was moved um, because the, the state of Mississippi, Mississippi State, won the College World Series. Um, you say, well, preacher, that ain't the Razorback. Yeah, I'd like for the Razorbacks to want it, but they didn't. But the Mississippi State Bulldogs did. The reason why that I'm impressed with them winning the College World Series is because that I noticed what this team did. This team got on their knees and they prayed to God and they did it publicly. They did it openly before every game that they played. That's impressive. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Give us more that will not be ashamed and they'll pray. Perhaps that was the reason or wasn't the reason, but I'm going to say it was the reason that God gave them the credit and be able to give them the blessings that they were able to win the College World Series. They were the only team that I saw do it. Just rambling a little bit and going on before I get more into the main message this morning, I'm thinking about a guy. I'm thinking about the man named Tim Tebow. I think most of you remember that guy. He still carries the flag for the Lord Jesus Christ. He is limited sometimes by a lot of the sports commentators and, and the things that are out there. But when you hear the testimony of Tim Tebow, it makes you appreciate that there are those people that still carry and still believe and they still trust Him in the Lord God Almighty. And uh, I'm not preaching Tim Tebow this morning, but what an example he was. You notice what he did whenever he would make a touchdown, he'd get into the end zone and he would get on his knee and he would thank God for what had happened each time he had went in that. Um, I tell you what, that is impressive. Um, I know his parents were missionaries and etc., but there were too many that was in the place that they did not care publicly that they declared their appreciation that God was the Lord of their life. And as far as I know, he is still carrying that flag for the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, forgive me for doing I just, I just He's just one of the main characters um, that is out there in the public eye that stands out in my mind. Um, whenever we think about it, you know what? Um, we are in the place to where that we know if there's ever a time that America needs God, it is today. Let me relate a few things to you this morning, if I may. Because, uh, first of all, you know what? Jesus died for this nation of America, just as he died for Israel. We read in John chapter 11. Let me, rever let me remind you of the verses we just read. <clears throat> Pardon me. It says, And this spake he, not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. Do you remember what brought this event up? When you read in this chapter, this is whenever Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. I'm telling you, God still is raising people from the spiritual dead, and He wants it to be an example and an example in this life that we're living in our nation. And the Lord knows we need it in our churches. Can I hear a good amen? And he says in verse 52, And not for that nation only, talking about Israel, 
but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. We know this got to be close to the end because we know in 1948, Israel became that nation. Thanks be unto God this morning, there is a reality of where we are today. What are we seeing today? May I remind you of some of the things you already know. We are seeing the rebellion. We are seeing the hate. We are seeing the killing. We are seeing the violence in our streets. And even, God forbid, but it is happening in homes across America. Our children are not being taught the standards as a whole no more than just 50 to 60 years ago. John and I, we know what it was, just like many of you as well know what it was. You were taught how it was to live for God in your early rearing and raising. Today, it is something distant and foreign. How can you say that, preacher? Because I see what's going on on the exterior. And because we see what's going on, it is very, very, very obvious. Drugs, suicide, disrespect to parents, disrespect to adults in general. God help us, we could get back to the place. If it can ever happen, we're so far gone, I don't know, but it's possible it could happen because this nation needs God. I'll tell you, when I was in school, I didn't say yeah and no to my teachers. It was yes, sir, and no, sir, yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. I know today it is far distant, and it is foreign for what we're hearing in our society and even in our schools today. But guess what? There are still those that are still holding a standard. Hey, I'm Tiffany. Keep holding that standard, girl. I know you're doing it. We need to keep doing what we must do in our nation and in our schools that we know it is right. We need parents that will stand up instead of their not evangelizing in the home like they need to. It seemed like even the glory has been lifted in a lot of our churches today. It seemed like the Jezebel and the Thyatire churches has infiltrated the houses of worship and they have come to the place to where that there needs to be a purging in the houses of God themselves. There are only rituals, realistic things. They don't want to preach against sin. They don't want to preach about people that they need to come to an old-fashioned altar prayer. It's only a feel-good. It's a do-daddy feeling that they want to feel in the houses what the, many of the preachers are, are preaching today. We need God back in our nation, in our churches, and in our homes. God, give us a good old-fashioned trip back to the cross, back to Jesus as He died on that cross. Let us find Him again afresh and anew. Let us find the altar to be real and it is new. Let there be a flame. Let there be a blaze that arise up. As I related to you before, I'll emphasize it. As long as I'm pastor here, these altars will never be vacated out of this building. We must have a place where we give ourselves to God. I could go on and on, I guess, but I don't want to lose you this morning. Um, here's, uh, here's what I feel that God is saying to us um, in these things that I'm relating to you. You know what? Uh, secondly, this morning, uh, what we need is a connection uh, with one another spiritually. Spiritually. I felt we have lost that connection to an extent. Um, in the book of Ephesians in chapter 4, beginning in verse number 4, verses 4 through 6, um, Paul wrote to the church there at Ephesus. He says, There is one body and one spirit, and even as you are called in one hope of your calling. He says, It is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you. Everybody say all. all. We've come to that place where there's reality. We need one another spiritually. Paul's emphasis, one body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God. Oh, stir us, God. Help us to move in the direction we need to spiritually so that we can start connecting one more time. I hate to say this this morning, but in reality, it seems like that sometimes in churches, it seems like that they're a little bit cautious about being able to shake one another's hand. I understand about the pandemic junk and stuff about that. 
But I'm talking about just about the warmth of, of the feeling. I like what Brother Donald's talking about in the Sunday school class this morning, um, where that there is a warmth, uh, where that there are people that can connect uh, with people, uh, telling one another, you're glad to see them, uh, you're glad you're here, and you're glad you're part uh, of the body of church. Um, we need one another spiritually, church. Um, perhaps one of the things that has happened uh, throughout our nation and throughout our churches uh, is there's been a distance uh, that's come between us. Uh, Instead of a distance, God draw us back together. Draw, draw, God draw us to a place where there's a oneness and a unity that we can love one another with an unexceptional love and a care that is there. I don't care if the world don't like it. I don't care if it's going to hurt somebody on the back pew or the front pew. I see, you thought I was going to talk about the back pew, didn't I? Or the front pew's feelings. It's the reality that we want God to be in the center. We want Him to be exalted. We want Him to be lifted up. By the way, our country was strong when it was recognized as being built as one nation under God. One God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Remember, remember, we are called the United States of America. May I say this to you this morning? We are drifting far from being united. And I say, God help us and have mercy upon us in America and the churches of America. If the churches would get back to the place...